Grace and peace, people of Rose Park. Before we dive back into Paul's letter to Timothy, would you pray with me? God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we are still celebrating Pentecost and as we prepare for Trinity Sunday, let our hearts, minds, souls, and spirits be aimed and directed to your kingdom, your glory, and your fame. May we draw closer to this word to try and draw closer to you, recognizing that you always take the first step towards us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. As a reminder, we're in Paul's letter to Timothy, the first letter. So 1 Timothy chapter 3. And we've been walking through these first two chapters. And if you remember, there's a struggle in the church in Ephesus, at this church where Paul is writing to Timothy to go and work out these struggles. And the main struggle they're having is they're having some poor leadership, poor teaching. And that theology that these poor leaders are teaching has trickled down to the believers. So Paul's writing to Timothy to encourage him to go and sort this out. And so we dive into chapter 3. Hear now a word of the Lord. <clears throat> Here is a trustworthy saying. If anyone sets his heart on being an overseer, he desires a noble task. Now the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil." He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Deacons, likewise, are to be men worthy of respect, sincere, not indulgent in much wine, and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested, and then if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way, their wives are to be women worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. A deacon must be the husband of but one wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. Although I hope to come to you soon, I am writing you these instructions so that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He, Christ, appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, just as we remembered last week, we have to hold this text in the greater context. If we simply pluck out these verses and overlay them with our own situation, we set up a recipe for disaster. In no way, shape, or form is Paul limiting the overseer or the elder or deacons to be only men. We know this within our own denomination, with our own history and tradition here at Rose Park, but we also know it because of Scripture. In plenty of places elsewhere in the New Testament, Paul highlights the gifts and faithfulness of women serving in the church. But in this particular church, Paul is calling for these men to serve as elders and deacons. And what I'd like for us to consider is that we're all called to these actions. We're all called to this life of godliness and righteousness. And some of us find ourselves on different places in the continuum. And that's okay. 
But it is our hope that by faithfully following Jesus, by listening to the words of God the Father and embracing the presence of the Holy Spirit, we are taking faithful steps towards righteousness and holiness so that we might all be effective, functioning members in God's family here at Rose Park. Because when we do, we'll be drawn closer to each other as we're drawn closer to him. Grace and peace, and we hope to see you on Sunday.